Mr. Lewis, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Just have a few questions for you. Uh, on April 25th and 26, 2015, uh, you were actually working for Pioneer, uh, the bus company, correct? Yes, I was. And you were, at the time of this incident, you were acting and working within the scope of your employment, correct? Correct. You were on duty, essentially, correct? Correct. Did you file a workers' compensation claim in connection with this case? I don't, re I don't recall that. I mean, I don't recall this. Okay. You were not... I was diagnosed with PTSD, so there's some things I don't recall. So that's one of the things I don't recall so you, you because don't, of this incident. I understand. Gotcha. You don't recall whether or not you received any compensation as a result uh, of any claim that you would have filed with workers' comp as a result of this election incident. During right. that time, I don't recall a lot of stuff. Okay. Yes. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Apt, go right ahead, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good afternoon, sir. My name is Jay Apt. I represent Diamante Kendrick. Do you know who Diamante Kendrick is? I haven't a clue. Um, have you ever heard his name before? No. Uh, this gentleman sitting next to me in the uh, black shirt and the tan jacket, do you recognize him at all? No. No? Do you have any knowledge <clears throat> that Diamante Kendrick was in any way related to the incident you've described? I haven't a clue about that. Okay, thank you. No other questions. All right, anybody else? Any redirect? On cross, uh, Mr. Shard asked you a few questions as to why, it, about whether or not you wanted to prosecute. Do you recall him asking you that? And that was the first gentleman. Yes. That, um, <clears throat> and you talked about having to do that because of your CDL license. Um, tell the jury, what were some of the requirements to maintain your CDL license and why you had to report this to the police? Well, from my, what I was know is that, you know, it's a commercial license and you just can't pick and choose not to talk to the police. They pull you over, you cooperate with them. And that's what I've been taught and trained to do. So that's what I did. And my company requires that, you know, that we cooperate with, Authorities, you know, in case of a report or something has to be taken. Uh, it's just, I don't pick and choose to do that. Something that was required as my job. And you were also asked by Mr. Shard on cross-examination, again, about wanting to prosecute. When you were speaking to the police about what had just occurred to you, were you shaken up at the time? Very much so. What was actually going through your mind as you were talking to police and recounting what um, what, what had just happened to you? Your Honor, he... It's been asked and answered, though, so let's move on. <laughs> Mr. Adams asked you a number of questions about your lawsuit. Do you recall that line of questioning? Yes, I do. And he asked you, um, did you see Jeffrey Williams that night? Do you recall him asking you that? Yes. He also asked you, did you see um, Birdman that evening? Do you yes. recall him asking you that? Um, why did you bring the lawsuit against the individuals that, you, that he named in your lawsuit? Why did you bring the lawsuit against those individuals? Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> Does the lawsuit that you um, have filed have anything to do with your testimony here today? No. The person of Jimmy Winfrey, are you familiar with that name? I've heard that name. Okay. Did you see that person named Jimmy Winfrey on the night that this occurred? I don't know. I can't. I no. Okay. <clears throat> Did you hear of that individual prior to um, this incident happening to you? No. <clears throat> and Mr. Adams asked you about Jimmy Winfrey. Um, is he a person named in your indictment? Me in your lawsuit? Excuse me, in your lawsuit. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I, yes. 
And are you aware of whether or not he pled guilty to the indictment, to an indictment involving this incident in Cobb County? He pleaded guilty and he took a plea deal. And, and yes. Okay. And do you know the charges for which he pled guilty to? The, the, for shooting that he was the one that shot at the bus, as far as I. I stand in objection. I'm going to ask you, do you know the charges, not why he pled, but do you know the charges that he pled to? I think. I stand in objection. Mr. Adams kept mentioning the $30 million lawsuit. Does that amount of money make you whole after what you went through on the night that this occurred? I stand in objection. Your Honor, he, that's a biased question, and it goes. Yeah, well, it's still improper as to the way he asked it, or the way he, what he gets at. Or he asked him. <coughs> you were asked about individuals on the bus and whether or not any of them ever talked to police. Um, did you ever see any of the individuals, once they got off the bus, come back out and speak with police? I don't recall. Okay. Um, you were asked specifically about Little Wayne. Did you ever see him once he got off the bus ever come back out and speak to police? Objection, I stand in While you were speaking with police, mm -hmm. did you pay attention to what was happening on the street behind you or in front of you while you were talking to the police? No. So to your knowledge, do you know if any cars appeared at the hotel while you were speaking yes, to the police? That's the same question. It's a form. When you were speaking to the police, do you know if any vehicles came to the hotel while you were speaking to the police? That I don't recall. That you don't recall. You were asked by Mr. Adams if anyone from the back of the bus came to the front of the bus to kind of speak with you as the shots were being fired. Do you recall that line of questioning? Yes. As the bus was being shot up, what were the individuals doing? Or what could you hear the individuals doing on the bus? I'm going to object to that now. And lastly, when you all were driving up 285, was Travis behind you um, as you all entered onto 285, or was he next to you or somewhere else? He was behind me. He was behind you. And did he stay behind you the entire time from 285 to 400? As far as I read, yes. And have you ever seen the indictment to which Mr. Winfrey pled to? I don't recall that. You don't recall? All right. Court's indulgence? Yes, ma'am. And my last question for you, Mr. Lewis. On that night, um, prior to the bus being shot up, did you see anyone on your bus brandish a handgun at all toward anyone? at the 12th compound or anywhere else. And that's all on the night of April 26th. No. No? Thank you. I have no further questions. Anything further, Mr. Adams? No, sir. No, sir. Mr. Shard, anything further? No, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Matthews, anything further? No, Your Honor. Any other counsel? All right, may Mr. Lewis be permanently temporary excuse the witness? Yes, he can be permanently excuse All right, Mr. Lewis? Yes. Over here. <laughs> I'm going to permanently excuse you as a witness. You're free to go about your duties and navigations. Um, just don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys in this case, and we thank you for your patience with us, okay? 
Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, how about some lunch? All right, excellent. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, take lunch at this point in time. It's uh, a little about almost five or five after one. Why don't we um, be in recess until about um, 2.30? Okay, and then we'll go ahead and um, see where the rest of the afternoon leads us, all right? Okay, all right. All rise for our jurors.